Tara Reid, former Senate aide who accused then-Senator Joe Biden of sexually assaulting her while she worked as a staffer in his Senate office three decades ago, announced last week that she had moved to Russia because she feels safer there. Since Reid's interview with Russian state-run network Sputnik, the mainstream media published that she defected, a characterization she and her lawyer strongly condemn. In a statement, Reid's counsel, Rada Sterling, denounced the headlines, writing, quote, Despite this week's tabloid headlines, she has not defected to Russia, nor is she seeking asylum. During a week-long trip to Moscow to oversee her book translation, she was told her life was in danger if she returned to the U.S. On advice, she is staying on while we ensure her safety. Here to tell us firsthand about her experience is Tara Reid and her lawyer, Rada Sterling, a crisis manager and founder of Due Process International. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thanks, Tara, thanks for Tara, having us. It, it's, a, it's our pleasure, of course, to be able to have this conversation with you. Tara, let's start by talking about how you feel your move to Russia has been mischaracterized. You know, if this is not a defection, what is it and what prompted the move, this, this threat to your safety? Well, I think, Bree, you know, you were kind of front and center witness, as was Robbie, to how I was treated by the mainstream corporate media um, when I came forward in 2019 and 2020. Um, basically, I was just from the out the gate, I was called a Russian asset. I had no ties to Russia. I had no affiliations. Um, and then through 2020, I was attacked. I had personal physical attacks to my safety, to my family. You know, I was threatened with my life. Um, I had a break in. My daughter's house was broken into. Um, she was threatened. She had to get a restraining order. My horse was being threatened to kidnap. I mean, it was a mess all of 2020. I couldn't get work. People would tell me that um, I was a security risk. And so I finally got a job with RT doing some op-eds and I was very, I did not conceal it. I was very open about it. Talked about, you know, working at RT, it wasn't very much money. And um, and then I went forward with, with, with that um, and still continue to get hassled and just called a Russian agent and all these horrible things. And eventually, um, my book came out in 2020 in COVID and many authors had trouble. And on top of mine, mine was suppressed. And as you have reported out, um, the FBI and DOJ worked on suppressing people on Twitter and other social media. On Facebook, for instance, my name in 2020, Tara Reid, was called Election Interference. Hmm. Um, so they kept deflecting the conversation from the allegations I made of being hmm. raped in 1993 by Joe Biden when I worked for him and no Russians were present. Um, and coming forward about that, they kept trying to deflect the conversation and I got caught up in that Russian sort of narrative. So recently my book um, was being offered to have international translation and that's what brought me to Moscow. Um, and I went ahead and went to Moscow. While I was there, I had several conversations with people who are experts in the field who gave me a warning um, that they were very concerned about my safety. Yeah, can you, Matt Gates. Could, could you elaborate on that to whatever extent you're possible? Are, were the people warning you that you were in trouble? Um, was it other, was it Russian people or people back in the States? It was American. It was, it was Americans. Yeah. Law enforcement? It was Americans or... that would know. It was Americans that would know. And bear, bear in mind, too, you know, the physical threats were already have happened and they started amping up again in 2023. And I, you know, I don't know if you saw the viral treat, tweet where I said, you know, look, I'm not suicidal. I'm not going to have an accident. That was because I was getting physically targeted again. And, um, it was during that time I was talking to Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and did an interview and I was set to testify. Um, so that was all happening simultaneously. Um, so it was based on that, but also they gave me a specific warning about a possible Interpol red notice, which I didn't really, I don't know international law and I think Rada could speak more eloquently and describe what that means, but it was, you know, mm -hmm. unsettling. I talked with Matt Gates and he just, he, you know, he didn't give me advice. He gave me information. He basically said, Tara, you know, I'm concerned for your physical safety. So and that's who you're referring last, to is, 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 that, is, is uh, political uh, elected representatives who have warned you about your safety. Correct. 
Okay. Yeah, um, Roger, Roger, maybe you want to jump in uh, here and elaborate yeah. on exactly what the nature of that threat of the, the Interpol report. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Tara received information from former intelligence or members of the community uh, that she was either at, her life may have been at risk and definitely her freedom and that she may have been reported to the Interpol Red Notice database, which if she had left Russia at that time would have likely led to her arrest en route back to the US in Turkey, where they could have kept her indefinitely, essentially facing unknown charges or unknown allegations. Now, Interpol is regularly used by authoritarian states as a, a means to harass people abroad, to have them arrested and subject to extradition proceedings, even if that country knows that they're not going to win. So it could definitely lead to her arrest. So we've already lodged filings with Interpol to find out if she's on uh, the database. And if she is, I've also lodged a uh, preemptive um, documents that would prevent them, hopefully, from accepting a notice from the US in the future. Now, if Tara had returned to the US, she was extremely concerned that uh, she would be detained potentially until after the next election. Mm. So, Red, I just want to make sure I understand, do you have any sense of what charges, what, on what basis they would have retained Tara? And moreover, is the feeling that there could not have been a direct flight back to the United States, that the concern was being interceded in Turkey or wherever else a layover would have happened? Uh, I th th there was no direct flight back to the US, so she would have to go via a third party country where she could have been detained. Alternatively, she could be detained in the US under, um, it, it could be anything. These days we've seen the way that the authorities have weaponized um, the justice system there for political gain. So they may have arrested her with some allegation that she is a Russian agent or that she has, um, you know, she's a domestic terrorist or anything to that effect. And they don't really need to provide that evidence in order to detain her for lengthy periods of time. So I think anyone when faced with that risk would say, mm -hmm. do I really want to go back right now? Or do I want to stay here and see whether my lawyers can get to the bottom of it, whether I can perhaps be assured protection when I testify at Congress about this very weaponization and about uh, what happened with Joe Biden in the 90s. And I think at this point, Tara had really no option but to stay in Russia. So it's it's more, um, you know, when you describe feeling un, uh, uh, being explicitly warned that you, you would not necessarily be safe returning the country, it's not... It, it, the safety aspect of it is more that that e government forces either on your way back to the U.S. or even at the U.S., you have some sense that they might be after you, not like a like a your life is in danger because a third party or something is is coming to kill you. Or so it, it's, it's actually a, a government threat of arrest and detention. It's, it's both, actually. You know, I've been physically targeted, Robbie. And, you know, like the other day, um, one of the FBI whistleblowers, the FBI said to a congresswoman, they couldn't guarantee that that whistleblower wouldn't be killed. Um, he was testifying in Spiden about the bribery case. Um, so these are very serious. I mean, I've been targeted physically several mm -hmm. times. I don't know by who. You know, I made police reports like one does. I, I actually went to federal um you know, law enforcement when it first happened in 2020, not knowing that they were actually going after me. And also remember that I have a sealed case that we still don't know what it is with a grand jury impaneled, and it's been sealed for three years, and they can indict on whatever it is at any time. Hmm. I think, Tara, just to try to raise, I think, some of the questions that uh, more skeptical audience members might have, they're, they might ask, well, given that you have been the victim of some threats or attacks in the past, and that so much of that centered around the events of 2020 and people who were frustrated that you raising your allegations at that time, and of course you had raised them many, many years in advance, but the allegations coming up at that point was going to threaten Joe Biden's presidential chances, et cetera. Given that that was kind of the temporal locus of all of that activity, why now do you feel as though there is a level of threat that justifies or re might require you to extend your time in Russia? And also, why Russia as opposed to some other countries, given the, the subtext of what it means to stay in Russia in America's current political climate? Well, you know, to answer your question fully, um, I was here 
for seven days, right? I, I mean, I literally only packed seven days with the clothes. So I don't even have a coat. Um, and I had been so happy because I got this book, you know, deal arranged where I was having the book translated and, over, and then another additional book accepted for next September. So I was thinking I could go back and forth between America and Russia. Um, I've just never bought into the Russophobia and the narrative because, as you know, Bria, most of it has been like the Steele dossier was turned over. It was false. It was fake. Um, all of this has been fake. I mean, Russia is a capitalistic country like the United States. They don't want to be our enemy. Um, we're not at, in a war officially with them. So why are they considered and why are they calling it defection or an enemy nation? So really what this is more about, it's not even about that. It's more about I just wanted to testify before Congress about Joe Biden and what happened in 1993. And I have been terrorized and marginalized to the point where I literally sought sanctuary because for me to fly home could have meant me walking into a jail cell where, as you know, the, the new laws allow them to hold people for several months without charges and without counsel. Mm. So that would have been very convenient for Joe Biden, wouldn't it? Yeah, we have, you know, commented, I've commented on the show many times about how uh, I, I believe you were treated so differently from other people who made Me Too um, accusations uh, in, in the reception you got from the mainstream media, uh, a kind of automatic skepticism that was just not extended to so many of these other instances where, where you know, f where it was automatic belief and you, it has to be, the burden is on to disprove it, where in your case it was, it seemed like the media was operating in a more, well, no, the burden is on her to prove it. We're not going to automatically believe it. Um, so I, I, you know, I absolutely understand and I, I witnessed that uh, total um, discrepancy. Do you think, um, so... Do you, so do you plan, do you expect you're going to be staying in Russia for some time now? And are you still in contact with Representative Matt Gates or anyone else of that kind vis-a-vis -vis what your situation might be here if you, if you were to return? Do you have so, someone, you know, contact in government, maybe someone like a political representative who could arrange for you to return and feel that you wouldn't be under the threat of arrest? That's a good question. I'll let Rada address it, um, but I'll address this portion of it that, yes, we're still communicating with um, Representative Matt Gates. Um, I still wish, and I'll, she'll explain the legal process of doing that, of testifying before Congress. I will not be bullied. I'm not going to be marginalized. I'm, I am going to testify. And Robbie, just, and, and Bree, just on a human level, you know, and Bree knows this, I went to Bernie Sanders, AOC. I went to these representatives before I went public for help. No one helped me and no one's really helping me now. Mm. And, and look at my life. It's been, they took a wrecking ball to my life, a wrecking ball. My life was destroyed. And I'm now facing, you know, my daughter, my pets. I don't know when I'll ever see them again. So mm. for me to make this decision, you know, it had to be serious because it's life altering and I'm, you know, and I don't know what's going to happen. So I'll let Rod is, you know, you know, we, we understand it and we so appreciate you uh, being willing to speak about uh, about your situation. Um, yeah, if, Raja, please jump in and, and maybe give your perspective yeah. on how a return could be um, uh, facilitated. Um, yeah, ideally. When, when will you find out about whether Tara's, you know, on an Interpol list or any other kind of list that would jeopardize her travel back to the United States? Now, unfortunately, with Interpol, there are very slow working mechanisms. So they would respond to us within four months is what they allow themselves. And we'll know at that point. But it's not just the Interpol warrant that we're concerned about. We can deal with that. If she's listed on Interpol, we'll have her removed. And that takes away that international risk, so to speak. Um, it's more what would happen if she returned to the US. And right now, what I'm seeing is she's been forced into a position. Tara's been forced into staying in Russia. This was not her choice. She has been forced into that position. And now what we're seeing is even the fact that she's there, not by choice, is being weaponized. If we look at the headlines of this week, we're seeing that she defected. She must have always been a Russian spy, a Russian asset. We're seeing articles come out where journalists have received um, comments and opinions from, you know, former intelligence officers saying she is was an asset. This is probably a Russian uh, agent or if she's not right now a Russian agent. She probably will be, just by the fact that she's in Russia, she'll be recruited. So that's 
putting her at serious risk. They didn't reach out to us and ask us for a comment. They didn't reach out to Tara and say, what about these rumours about you defecting to Russia? They just printed this opinion. And to me, that looks like an intelligence operation designed to discredit Tara and to put her further at risk of actually being charged with a crime like espionage or, or similar. Or now that she's in Russia, you know, the, these rumours about violating sanctions and all sorts of things. So they're actually compounding her risk and making her feel even less safe to return to Russia. So we need to be doing a lot of work in the US to uncover this sealed indictment against her. We don't know what that is. And they could arrest her at any time, uh, especially with the upcoming election. So right now, she's definitely not safe. And we're working towards trying to get some assurances. We've been liaising with uh, various, um, you know, Matt Gates and other people to see what sort of protection they might be able to offer or assurances. And we've seen you know, we've seen the response that Tara should not feel at risk, but the fact that that response is even coming from that department is telling in itself that her profile is raised up so far and is being reviewed by intelligence agents in the United States who could be formulating uh, unfair cases against her to lead to her wrongful arrest. Um, so right now, on legal advice uh, from, from myself and a US attorney, Jonathan Levy, we are saying you are definitely not safe right now to return. Yeah. And no yeah. other country, Russia is the safest place for her to be. If she went to a European country or uh, Turkey, for example, the US can actually get her arrested there or make a, an extradition request and she'd be locked up while she's fighting against that unfair extradition request, even if she ultimately won it. Yeah, right. We did just cover yesterday a story of a gray zone, uh, gray zone journalist who was detained in London. Um, and interrogated for hours uh, because, on some level, there was some skepticism about his reporting and accusations of a similar nature about him being a Russian asset, et cetera. So it certainly isn't um, uh, a, a cynical uh, or, or paranoid uh, concern at all. It is happening. I guess I think the question that people are going to have is, you know, how did it come to be that this framing, if, if it was your choice to extend your trip in Russia until you could guarantee that you weren't on an Interpol warrant list, or to raise the profile of your concerns, uh, the threats to your freedom, uh, such that if the government, if, if the United States or if the government tried to intercede and did keep you in custody, then there would be a big international to do, and at the very least, they would have to justify it in a way that could be very embarrassing on the public stage. It seems like you have accomplished that on some level, right? It seems like now there is enough tension being paid to this, to your point, Rada, that it, do, do you feel more safe at this time saying, well, I could travel because the United States would have a hard time justifying my detention and would lend credibility to my claim that I am being targeted? No, in, in a sense, I, I in a sense, so I, I, I would say that in a sense, raising this issue will fight back a little bit against them. And hopefully they will see this as a huge red flag not to further intimidate her. But in, it could have actually been part of their plan to keep Tara in Russia, where they could then divert attention onto the whole Russian element of it, rather than on the allegations themselves. And in that way, they've almost won, at least in the uh, Democrat media. But that's the issue, right, Rada? So people are going to say, well, if you felt unsafe coming back to the United States, then why Russia, given how you know that's going to be framed? And is it possible at this point to go to another country with, which, with whom there is no uh, extradition relationship with the United States to cut mm -hmm. against the presumption mm -hmm. of collusion and all of the kind of Russia, Russia phobic accusations um that there are? Unfortunately, even countries that don't have an extradition treaty with the US does not mean that you won't be extradited. At any time, you can make an extradition request regardless of whether there's a treaty in place. So yeah. Russia really right now is the safest place. She's already there. And uh, we would recommend that she stay there and not travel until we've sorted it out. Mm. Tara, I want to give you uh, yeah. the final word. Um, if you, you, the, the narrative is that you have defected to Russia and that this, you know, from a mainstream media perspective, they're saying this um, justifies the skepticism they've had all along of the things that you've said, the experience you related, the horrific experience you related about uh, having to do with Joe Biden all those years ago. Uh, what, what do you want to say to those critics that say this shows that we were right because she's, she, we, we said this was a, this was a Russian-based 
smear, and now here is this person residing in Russia. So this 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 bears out our criticism. I, again, that's not coming from me. I want to give you an, a, ch a chance to address the people in the in other media outlets who are saying that. I understand. Um, you know uh, what I want to say is that that there's been a huge coordinated effort um, at great expense by the Democratic National Committee and the Biden administration to silence, suppress what happened in 1993. No Russians were there when I was sexually assaulted by Joe Biden at work at the Congress. You know, that was Senator Joe Biden that did that. I have tried. I went forward then in 1993 and filed, you know, the sexual harassment and wanted to file the, the more information about the sexual assault. I tried to get help. I tried to get help in 2019. I tried to get help in 2020. And this is the result. I'm here. I was here for a book deal. You know, there's a lot of disinformation about Russia. It's a beautiful country. They've given me sanctuary. And, um, you know, and I've sought, you know, I wasn't planning on seeking asylum. Um, but my circumstances ne necessitate me being safe. And that came directly from a U.S., you know, member of Congress, as well as other people, experts that would know, not just me. So I, I made this decision. It was a very grave decision. It was very thoughtful. Um, but while I'm here, I'm going to do my best, you know, to we're going to prefer Congress is what it's called so that I can testify remotely. And, you know, at this point, my life was really wrecked. Right. But I really want this playbook to not work anymore, because if I allow them to silence me and destroy me, they will keep doing this to every single whistleblower. So at this point, I'm trying to do this for the people behind me and um, that are trying to come forward. And I hope that that works. You know, I hope I'm able to testify before Congress. Tara, just to ask quickly, and maybe Rada, you know something about this as well. Did Matt Gates give any corroborating evidence or say anything specific about how he's aware that you might be threatened by the U.S. intelligence agencies or, or what have you? Uh, Tara, <laughs> you were in uh, oh, you communication with Matt. Yeah. 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 What, 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 what no, he told me. He told me directly over the phone. Bree. Like I was in a phone conference with him, and I spoke directly with legal counsel and with uh, Matt Gates. And when I was direct in a direct conversation with him, he very clearly told me that he was very concerned. Not just with he couldn't do anything about like um, immunity. He he gave me that information. Like he did because he didn't know what cases they were bringing. It's sealed. Mm. But he did say, you know, Tara, I'm really concerned about your physical safety. Your, but, you know, I'm worried for but you. Tara, Tara, I guess the, and, the question is, yeah. why, what is the basis of Matt Gates' concern? Because, you know, one could say, you know, I, I, I would be worried about you, generally speaking, just because of the nature of your allegations and the nature of the political climate in 2020. But w the idea of it coming from a sitting congressperson suggests that he is privy to knowledge about what's happening behind the scenes that would raise the generalized concern level to something closer to an immediate threat. So I wonder if, if he said anything to give you confidence that he's speaking to some specific um, pending threat against you as opposed to speaking more generally about kind of the political climate and third party threats and things like that. I think you would have to ask him directly. That's what he told me on the phone. And that's where you ended the conversation. And, um, you know, you've seen now uh, the Congress, you know, talking uh, other members of Congress talking about other whistleblowers having the same um, conundrum, having the same problem of physical, their physical safety being threatened. So two of them right now. One of them is trying to also testify, I think, remotely. I was really scared. And then the other one was the one I mentioned earlier that just came out where the FBI said, look, we can't guarantee their safety, that they won't be killed. Yeah, when so we... I think what we need to focus the energy on is Biden. Why mm -hmm. is our government operating like a mafia state? Why mm -hmm. is Joe Biden allowed to intimidate, suppress, and control the narrative so much that people are afraid to testify truth? That's what has to be. Those are the questions. Uh, we will be, yeah, we'll be following up with uh, Representative Gates and really trying to get to the bottom of uh, whatever um, legal threat uh, you might be facing because you know, this should still be the United States and everyone able to express dissent consistent with 
the First Amendment and all the other rights um, yes. you should be granted. Um, Raja, thank you for joining us. And Tara, thank, thank you, you so much for be being willing to speak with us about your situation and hopefully um, shed more light on what's going on. We really appreciate it. Thanks, thank Raja. you.